Not too many brands can say they've built nine iterations of a bike, especially a hardtail mountain bike. After all, mountain biking is still a relatively young sport, but Santa Cruz just came out with the ninth iteration of the Chameleon. Clearly, I'm a little late to the party because this is the first time I've actually ever put a leg over any of the Chameleons. When I first started mountain biking, I jumped right into the full suspension game. But with the trends of slacker, steeper, longer, these hardtails have become more and more impressive and much more capable. So in this video, I'm gonna share my thoughts on the Santa Cruz Chameleon. So if you like what you see in our videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And if you wanna help support us a little bit more, you can do that by signing up for the Bikepacking Collective. The Bikepacking Collective is bikepacking.com's annual membership that not only helps support this YouTube channel, everything you see on bikepacking.com, but it also gives back to you. Every month you're automatically entered to win giveaways. You get industry discounts with a variety of brands we work with, and twice a year shipped to your door, you get the Bikepacking Journal, which is our very own print publication. So if you're interested in signing up or want to learn more, there's a link provided below. So before I get into my review, I just wanted to let you all know that Logan did a full written review, which you can find on bikepacking.com. Logan has more time with previous versions of the Chameleon, so he offers a little bit more insight as far as comparing past Chameleon versions. So the original Chameleon was built around being able to adapt. That's what a Chameleon does. It adapts to its natural surroundings. Over the years, the Chameleon has definitely seen quite a bit of change, but this bike continues to be very adaptable. It can run multiple wheel sets. It has adjustable dropouts for a single speed setup or geared. And Santa Cruz markets this bike towards not only the free rider that this bike originally was for, but also bike packing, which is why we're here. So Logan tested the large and he sent it over to me. And so I'm testing the large as well. I fall right in between a large and a medium. I'm just under 5'10", but make no mistake, I definitely fit this large. I'm basically equal torso to inseam. And so the bike feels really great as far as the reach. And obviously it has plenty of standover with this super, super low top tube. That being said, this large more than likely has a different ride characteristic than the medium. This large bike definitely feels more planted and stable, whereas that medium just might feel a little bit more playful but we'll get into those ride thoughts here in a second. The new Chameleon is only available now in a aluminum version, and it does come in four sizes, from small to extra large. The bike is built around a boost front and rear end with a 130 millimeter fork. And you might be wondering, what is MX? Well, MX means mixed wheel. So the front wheel is a 29er, and this rear wheel is a 27.5. For those unfamiliar, the reasoning behind mixed tire sizes is to have a larger front wheel with more rollover friendly diameter for tackling chunk, rocks and roots, and a smaller rear tire to keep that back end more nimble and agile. The mixed wheel size has definitely gained some popularity in the enduro scene, and it gives the Chameleon a much more aggressive stance paired with some of the geometry, which we'll talk about in a second. The biggest upside to this mullet that I found was it gave this bike much more turning capabilities. And oftentimes I thought to myself, wow, I probably wouldn't be able to do that with a 29er rear wheel. But the 27.5 rear wheel just does not climb nearly as well. And because this bike is so adaptable, I ended up throwing my 29er wheel set on this bike to test that theory. And indeed, this bike definitely climbs a lot better with that 29er rear wheel, but it didn't take too much away from the descents. So as I mentioned, this bike is aluminum, and it's a worthy talking point because it definitely affects the ride quality. And because the Chameleon is aluminum bike, it's naturally going to be more harsh, but I feel like this specific frame is a little bit more harsh versus some other bikes that I've used in this same category. I can't 100% pinpoint why, but I do have some theories. First off, I feel like this frame is super heavy and it's probably overbuilt. And second, this is a large bike. And paired with my weight, which my rider weight is 160 pounds, I feel like it just doesn't have that snap or that flex that, say, the medium chameleon would. And third, because this bike was designed or built with geometry that excels in descending, once this bike gets going at higher speeds and starts to go over rocks and chunk, the harsh nature of the aluminum material definitely comes out in the ride quality. So when I did throw on that 29er wheel set, that 29er wheel set happened to be a carbon wheel set. And riding that carbon wheel set with this bike 
it was extremely jarring. So the dropouts got a big overhaul on the Chameleon and these dropouts are pretty slick. The dropouts are specific to the rear wheel. So if you have a 27.5 rear wheel in, you need the 27.5 dropouts. This allows the Chameleon to maintain similar geometry no matter what wheel size you're using. The downside to this is while well, you need to swap about your dropouts if you wanted to change wheel sizes. So it does take more time. They don't work together, but rather have markings that indicate where each dropout is placed so you can match them up. The dropouts themselves allow 12 millimeters of adjustability. It did adjust the dropouts here and there, but I found the most comfortable ride quality, one that was the fastest and one that was the most nimble and quick and responsive was slamming the dropouts all the way forward. Overall, these new dropouts are probably the best dropout that I've ever used. So as as far as geometry is concerned, the 2022 Santa Cruz Chameleon has quite a few changes from the previous version. And it all starts with a longer front center, 782.9 millimeters on this large to be exact. It's got a slacker head tube angle at 65 degrees and the steeper seat tube angle sits at 74.4 degrees. Those three measurements work in unison to make a longer bike that is more stable yet puts the rider in the center of the bike to enable you to shift your weight to maneuver the bike. And this is nothing new in the geometry world. We've seen this trend with not only hardtails, but also full suspension bikes. These changes certainly make this bike inspiring to ride, especially on the descents. And if there's one word that I would categorize this bike with, it is indeed stable, paired with that longer chainstay that they added as well. And the reason behind that stability is mainly because this bike is so long. The wheelbase on this large comes in at 1,207.8 millimeters. So to put that into perspective, the medium salsa timberjack that I have tested comes in at 1,164.5 millimeters, so drastically different. And the large timberjack comes in at 1,180.5 millimeters, so still, what, just under 30 millimeters shorter. But when I jump on the Chameleon, I don't feel that Timberjack. What I feel is the Salsa Blackthorn, the longest bike I own, the biggest bike I own. The Blackthorn comes with a wheelbase of 1,228 millimeters. So pretty comparable to this hardtail. And honestly, they climb very similar. Once you settle into a climb, they have this one speed characteristic. And while this isn't frustrating, it lets you enjoy your climbs. It just doesn't have that punch that say some other bikes in this category do. That being said, once you point this bike downhill, it definitely has no limits. Outside of the harsh aluminum ride quality, this Chameleon is hands down the best hardtail descender I've ever pedaled. Hardtails in general are great bike packing bikes because, well, they can ride gravel roads really well, they can ride single track really well, and they're simple. And when I loaded the Chameleon down, that is truly where this bike shines. And that's why I think because of my rider weight at 160 pounds, when it's bare, it's a rather harsh ride. So say you are heavier, seriously, if you're a heavier rider, I bet this large frame will definitely flex more and be more comfortable. But as far as bike packing is concerned, this bike handled the weight really well. It had a little bit more of a snappy ride quality. And when it was loaded down, it didn't take away the energy, but it put that energy right back into my pedal stroke or into the trail. And it was a much more lively bike. And sure, it was still a rather sluggish ride on the uphills, but taking this on a descent when it was loaded, it was probably the most fun I had on this bike. A cool bike packing feature that Santa Cruz offers on this bike is the three pack mounts underneath the down tube so that you can add a cargo cage. Maybe the downside to this bike as a bike packing bike is this top tube. Clearly it slopes quite drastically, so there isn't much frame bag space for a custom frame bag, but we did get one made by Rockgeist here. And the other thing is there's only one bottle mount within the frame and that is on the down tube. And they did didn't add one on the seat too because well clearly there's not a ton of space especially with smaller medium frames most dropper posts wouldn't be able to fit if you did indeed have those mounts this build right here is the rmx or mixed wheel and this bike comes in at just under three thousand dollars the bike with pedals and the frame bag weighs 31.4 pounds just looking at the comments on logan's review and him even bringing it up in his review this is a pretty expensive bike for what you get. And like Logan mentioned in his review, many bike brands are having challenging times with the pandemic. And that's likely the case with this bike and why it is so expensive. So just putting that into comparison with the Salsa Timberjack, that XT build comes in at just over $2,000 and the GX build comes in at 2,500. Highlighting a few components, the bike does come with a Fox 
Rhythm 34, which in my opinion is actually a great fork, albeit a little heavy. And I really did appreciate the lockout on this fork, especially when I was taking it out for bike packing. It definitely just stiffened the front end so that I could hammer up hills or just when I was riding on pavement. The bike comes with an NX drivetrain, so shifter, derailleur, and cassette, but the cassette is only in 1150, not in 1152. And the bike comes with a descendant crank in the 32 tooth variety, but the bike can fit up to a 34 tooth chainring. The bike comes with a 35 mil BergTech cockpit. So BergTech, they're an Enduro or downhill brand. So these components are strong, but definitely a little bit heavier. And the bike comes with 180 front and rear rotors with guide T brakes. And I actually really kind of like these guide T brakes. Sure, they're a little large and bulky, but they've got pretty good stopping power. Talking about the wheels, the hoops are race face AR 30 mil rims. It comes with SRAM hubs, which this rear hub right here is really pretty shitty. It has horrible engagement and you can definitely tell, especially when you're climbing. And rounding out the wheel set, it comes with a Maxxis Minion DHF 2.5 inch up front and a 2.5 inch aggressor in the back. Santa Cruz states that the bike has a capacity to run 29 by 2.6 or 27.5 by 2.8. That being said, just looking at the clearance in the rear wheel when I had the 29er in there and right now, you could probably run a 29 by 2.8 and a 27.5 by and finally, the bike does come with an SDG 170 mil dropper post. And well, this dropper post actually was really great. It handled a bike packing bag, a heavy bike packing bag really well. It had that power to lift up and it's got plenty of travel. So if you wanted to add a wolf tooth valet, which will take up 25 millimeters of travel, it leaves you with plenty of remaining dropper travel left. So this 2022 Santa Cruz Chameleon, I was pretty excited to ride this mixed wheel bike. Well, it definitely has some downside with the slow climbing capability and harsh aluminum ride, the Chameleon truly has an extremely capable descending ride quality. But surprisingly, the bike was at its best when it was loaded down. It was snappy, it had some give to it, and it handled the load well. While it might not be the most balanced bike I've used to bike pack, it's grounded and stable. Although it doesn't have much frame space and it might not be the traditional bike packing hardtail, it was a blast. So now I wanna hear your thoughts. What do you think about the Chameleon, especially this RMX build at just around $3,000? Is it too expensive? Leave a comment in the comment section below. As always, thank you all so much for watching, and until next time, pedal further.